Well, guys, it's been a little bit, but I'm back with another Cars 2013 ranked video where we go through each and every 2013 Disney Pixar Cars diecast series, rank all the cars from worst to best. Today, we have the Rusty's Racing series. From 2013, it included eight cars, that is, um... Five singles, one deluxe, and a two-pack. So, let's get started with the worst of the series. So, if you guys didn't know or don't know which cars were in the 2013 Rusty's Racing Series, and you heard me say there was a two-pack, you probably assumed that that two-pack would include Rusty and Dusty. Nope. For some weird reason, this year, Mattel decided to release the two as singles, and that's where Rusty here... Uh, that's why Rusty here is the worst. He is a unique model. He is honestly pretty nice. I'm looking at mine right now. He honestly is pretty nice. It's cool how he has this stuff in the roof ripped, but honestly, I just don't get it. Why he and his brother were released as singles. And that's mainly the reason why they, why he's here. Why he's at the end. Well, honestly, eh, he's been released so many times, he's really nothing special. Yeah, Dusty here isn't really anything special either. Him being released in a single pack just, again, kind of threw me off here and made me want to put him in a at, at towards the end. And, of course, he has been released way too many times to count. He is nice, though. I do like his expression, and I definitely like him a bit more than Rusty because he's a van and not many vans have been released. Let me just put him back on my shelf. Okay, Mattel, fine. I agree with you. The original release of Fred was maybe a bit too big. But do you solve that problem by making him absolutely tiny? I believe that making him the same size as Otis was probably the best possible solution. But yeah, guys, this is the two pack Lightning McQueen and Fred. But not just any McQueen. McQueen with sign, which actually moves this from the worst spot. Uh, I originally had this as the worst, and then I realized McQueen with sign isn't all that bad. Of course, you have the sign, which is a pretty cool accessory and very movie accurate. But what I love about the sign is how you guys know how he hides behind the sign in the first movie. Well, guys, there are some clips on the bottom of the sign. All you have to do is um, put lightning... Uh, yeah, put it under McQueen or put McQueen on top of it. It'll click in or whatever. I don't have it, so I don't know if it clicks. And yeah, you'll have McQueen's wheels attached to the sign. You'll have McQueen officially attached to the sign. And you can do this with a bunch of different characters, which honestly is a pretty cool feature. But why put them in a two-pack instead of as singles? I don't know, guys. The 2016 Rusty's Racing Line. Definitely fix this for me by putting McQueen with sign as a single, Fred as a single, and Rusty and Dusty in a two-pack. Not much to say about Mac here except for one thing. Pretty sure he was the first ever release of a car with as a cab without the little hole to attach a trailer to. You guys know how nowadays, whenever a uh, hauler is released as a single, it um it won't have the hole that connects it to its hauler. Which, yeah, it does look more realistic, but come on. I want to have my 2017 Gill hook up to my Jocko Flocko Mac hauler. It's just not going to happen. That's why Mac is so low on the list. But, I mean, that's it for the re-releases. Well, this is technically a new release, and I think he has a different expression. Well, wait, hold on. The other guys in the series were, really, were re-releases, too. Guys, I just realized something. This whole series is full of re-releases, except for McQueen with Sign, and Mac is just a variant. Interesting. At least, once again, the 2016 line fixed that by releasing mainly uh, new releases. Donna Pitts, for some reason, appeared quite a bit in the first Cars movie. Not only was she in the rest of the descent, she also appeared in the end, and her mouth was moving, but she wasn't talking because McQueen was talking to Tex. And you kind of see her in the background... Talking with Mac, and I believe Fred, and Mater, and the other Radiator Springs cars. I just don't really get why um, why she was in the first movie. 
more than the other cars. And this is actually, of course, her second release. But she is a pretty nice diecast. One thing I do want to point out, she only has one uh, rear view mirror. I just want you guys all to look at how absolutely dirty the windows are made to look. They look like they're rusty, and it just kind of looks really gross. Yeah, she is pretty cool. So, why was Vern released in the Rusty's Racing Series? I'll explain that in a second, or at least my theory. But he's absolutely amazing. I love the reference to Vern's being a uh, taxi service near where the Pixar Studios are located. I love how we never saw him from the front, much like uh, much like Bud. And I absolutely love how many times he've, he's been released. I believe, yeah, he's had two regular releases uh, with regular eyes and two lenticular releases. Two actually, actually two variants of him as lenticular. The second one Fixing an eyebrow color error, I believe. But guys, why exactly was he placed in the Rusty's series? Here's my theory. Do you guys see the background for these cars? It's the tent at the LA Speedway. The colors match up, and the background being full of stands, and it being during the daytime is really what makes it stand out to me as the LA Speedway series. Now guys, take a look at the cars we've already covered. Donna Pitts appeared at the Speedway. Mac appeared at the LA Speedway outside the tent, a lot like Donna and Rusty and Dusty. And Vern appeared going into the Speedway. Not exactly the best pick for a uh, place to put Vern. There honestly isn't any, aren't any other good series to put him in except the Piston Cup, in which case I'd say for the Piston Cup series, replace, like, I don't know, replace RPM or Nitroade with him. I don't know. But at least that's my personal theory. Or you could have easily just put him into the RS Classic series. I guess that's fine, too. And number one is Jonathan Wrenchworth. Jonathan is extremely unique as well. He's actually, you may think he's hard to spot in the movie if you don't know where to look. Obviously, yeah, he's probably in the Rusty's tent somewhere. No, he's not, actually. He is the guy in the Rusty's commercial with the license plate. All we see is the, uh, is the license plate with the Emeryville that says basically Emeryville where Pixar is located. And he, of course, is in the commercial for Rusty's. And I just love that, how he got a release. He is, sadly, a re-release. But, I mean, it, it's fine. I would, I'm perfectly fine with him being here in the series instead of a new release. Anyway, though, guys, he is really great. I love his expression. I love his model. I love basically everything about him. Now, if only they released a variant of him with a clean bumper. That would have been great, like how it is in the commercial. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Bye now.